Hi there and welcome to a brief update on the situation in Iceland. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. Today is Wednesday, June 19th. It is approximately 8.15 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time, about 2.15 in the afternoon in Iceland. And I want to put together a brief update video today because uh, there's what I think is a pretty significant development that's taken place uh, over the evening in Iceland over the last 24 hours. And that is just getting right to it. Um, we have, this is the, the best map I have of the lava field, and here's our eruptive cone that's been erupting for the last couple of weeks or so, the primary event from the May 29th eruption. Uh, and as many of you know, there's a lava pond, a perch lava pond that's accumulated on the south side that's been prone to uh, somewhat intermittent overflows. So lava has flowed over that in either direction over the past few weeks and one of those had advanced down and gone up against the berm here a week or so ago and had spilled over a little bit but then had kind of stalled and died down well in the last 24 hours that that tongue of lava was reactivated and started advancing slowly but but steadily down the slope uh, headed towards the Svartsingi power plant. So as you might imagine, this prompted immediate response from the Icelandic uh, government and people and to protect the, the infrastructure here with the power plant, which is in incredibly important for this part of Iceland, they deployed some earth moving equipment to try to build up little walls and to divert and slow down the lava flow. And then the other thing they did was they actually brought in um, like kind of like fire brigade trucks to spray water onto the lava and slow it down. And that's kind of significant and noteworthy because that's the first time since uh, the 1973 eruption on the Isle of Heimey off the south coast of Iceland where water has been directly used to slow down uh, the advancing lava flow. So let me take you to a few news stories from today that will show you some video of this. And thanks as always to Amanda Joe who sent me uh, most, if not all, of these links here to the situation and, and let me know this morning what was going on there. So thank you to her. Um, so here's a new story. Resort to lava cooling for the first time since the Heimei eruption. Um, lava likely to pour over a berm not far from Svartsengi. Uh, they expect to contain it by spraying it with water. No danger to travel and the lava is moving slowly. There's a little video clip here um, that shows the lava. You can see it's moving pretty slowly there, more or less an ah-ah uh -uh lava flow. And then some of the earth moving equipment there that's been used to try to, you can see it in the background there, try to uh, divert and slow down that lava a little bit. I have a few other video clips as well, so if this one's not quite satisfying. And a little bit murky there because the, the clouds are low. You can see the lava off here to the left, and they're just piling up rock and earth materials here to try to keep that lava from advancing down this slope here. Uh, so there's this story, and I'll make sure all these news stories get put into the video description if you'd like to see that. Uh, this is a pretty impressive video here. So you can see here the, um, the fire truck that's spraying the water right onto the lava flow to try to cool and, and slow that down a little bit. Um, so there's that one. And then this one's pretty impressive too. This is a nice little video clip showing them spraying the water directly onto the lava. Um, yeah, and you know, this has some, it really just depends on like how, you know, in this case, this is probably in a, a very appropriate measure. Uh, you have a very small lava flow that's advancing as we'll see here in a few minutes, the uh, output from the vent is slowed down a bit. And so this is a good way to try to combat an advancing lava flow. Obviously, if you have a uh, much more higher volume of lava, um, this can be largely ineffective, even if you have you know several of these. So uh, great little video there, though. Just kind of neat to see them uh, circling back to this strategy, a uh, defensive mechanism that they haven't used since the, the early 70s. Um, another article here, a similar sort of thing. There's several of these on different news outlets. Um, and so, yeah, they did use a little bit of that last night with the water. Um, and then this is a map that might be helpful as well that shows, you know, the main spatter cone, the fissure events that were here from May 29th, the orange is the flow field. 
Uh, Sea Lingarfelt is this hill right here, and we have this berm that extends from uh, Thorpeur here up to Sea Lingarfelt, and the lava that out of this perch lava pond is spilling over just barely uh, this defensive berm. But the danger there is if it spills over and if, if you had renewed activity, um, it would make a beeline down the hill towards the infrastructure of the power plant. So that's the big concern there. As it stands, the, the eruption looks like it's slowed down quite a bit. So probably not a problem for now, um, but with the lava up, up to the height, if not over the height of the berm, uh, that presents a bit of a dilemma moving forward with exactly what they might if they're you know for a future eruption uh, this is a big problem moving forward so um, and then this was just this morning so this is probably the latest um, update that Amanda Joe sent me so lava cooling stopped in the situation assessed so they've stopped at this point so the videos I showed you were from last evening I believe they stopped spraying the water on the lava flow and now they're just gonna take a look at it and decide uh, what they're going to do. And then the other part of this that's interesting here is um, they have bought some expensive lava cooling equipment um, to help with these efforts, but that equipment's not quite yet in the countries. So they're waiting for that to show up. So um, pretty interesting. But, you know, the if, if nothing, the Icelandic community and people are very um, innovative and decisive and when they want to get something done they get it done um, and this is no exception to that case uh, so I th thought I'd start with the news a little bit first because I thought that was noteworthy just something interesting that they've something they hadn't done in you know 51 years whatever just a long time pretty interesting um, and then this is a bit of sad news but maybe not completely unexpected some of you might remember that in good one of the buildings that was most heavily damaged uh, during the earthquake activity and all the chaos that's gone on since November of last year. This is the inside of that sports complex where they play uh, soccer, football. Um, you can see these huge cracks through here. Um, probably had some hopes that this would be repairable and you know that this could be fixed, but the decision has been made to just demolish the sports facility. Um, and so that's kind of sad because as you might expect, this was one of the focal points or central locations for this community was the sports complex. Kids, families would go there for recreation, to, to watch people play sports, uh, that sort of thing. So it was clear, quote, it was clear some time ago that there's total damage to the building. The building lies under this hops crack and this was completely clear. Um, so, and this was a, a, a town council decision. So this was not just made by one individual. Um, so that's sad. Um, and then I think this is something they're going to do fairly soon too. Yeah, getting started soon. She expects the demol demolition to begin in the next coming weeks. Um, yeah, reusing some of the building's materials. Yeah, kind of sad. I mean, just just another, I think another um, event that has slowly and probably forever changed uh, the good end of it community. So kind of sad to see that, but again, not completely unexpected given the amount of damage that was done there. So so let's wrap up this brief update with just a quick look at the data. Again, the main thing I wanted to, to get to was the, um, the lava flowing over the berm and just that kind of news story there. So if we go to our Svart Sengi station, uh, we can see that, you know, there, yeah, there's uplift going on, but it is a very slow rate here. Granted, the eruption is still going on. Um, so this looks quite similar here. This part of this graph looks pretty similar to me, just eyeballing it, to the early days after the uh, March 16th eruption, just in terms of the uh, level of uplift. So will this trend start to take a more dramatic rise in terms of elevation gain? just like we see here with this clear uh, change in slope between these two trends, like we saw in early April. Um, er, too early to say, but clearly uplift is continuing. That's a clear indicator that magma is still being pumped into this subsurface shallow magma storage zone um, and more or less setting the table for another f future uh, eruption similar to the last few that we've seen there. So. Um, not much new there, just similar data to the, the data we've been looking at coming out of um, these GPS stations that monitor ground deformation. Earthquakes, um, not a whole lot 
going on in the area of note, you know, a couple, maybe five or six earthquakes over the past 24 hours, close to or near the vent, but quite small. Um, and then we've seen this pattern before, just, you know, some small clusters around uh, Fagradelsfjallt or over towards uh, the Krishuvik system, Lake Krevravatn. Looks like the biggest one here in this sequence is this uh, 1.8 over in this area. So um, nothing alarming, nothing that indicates magma is moved into that area. Um, we would presume that those are tectonic in nature until we see evidence to the contrary. So, uh, and then a final look at the our spatter cone and what's going on there. So there's our perched lava pond. Um, I did check this out and look at it over a few different bits of time and it is still active. Um, I think it slowed down a bit though over what we've seen the past couple days. There is, but I did see a few little bits of spatter here and there uh, and I think I went back far enough that I found a few incandescent glows here and there. So it's still active but it does seem to have perhaps slowed down a bit over what we saw a couple days ago with the drone flight on Monday. So we'll just have to monitor this. This could be uh, the last throws, if you will, of activity for this surface vent, at least for the time being, uh, or it could continue to, to plug away at, at a very slow effusion rate for the next day or two. We'll just have to see. But I think we're definitely over the hump in terms of this May 29th eruption in terms of lava output. And now uh, it's just a scramble to try to raise those berms, protect the infrastructure, and prepare for the next eruptive event. So uh, unfortunately, this this slow moving saga in Iceland continues for the time being. So with that, we'll go ahead and wrap up. Thanks for joining me for this brief update. Hope you enjoyed it. I appreciate all your support for the channel. Thanks again to Amanda Joe for providing a lot of the news and information that I was able to share with you today. And I will post another one of these as soon as there is uh, something to discuss in terms of activity or something I want to share. So thanks again for your time. Have a great day. Take care.